Well, they've gotten off to a great start, Dan, and they're getting tremendous performances from uh, Jalen Hurts, from the receivers, from absolutely everybody. The only thing I say is that they played three games. That's it. And, and the last time I checked, the season goes until January 8th. How would you like to win the NFC and have the number one pick in the draft? <laughs> that it's, that can't have ever happened. That cannot have ever happened. It may have in 103 years. Can you? Uh, hey, dude. What if you get the third pick? Because you know two quarterbacks are going to go one, two. There, there's Will Anderson. Will Anderson is right now trending to be an eagle. This is crazy great. This is crazy great. It's unbelievable, man. On what and how everything is working out. Let's go over to our friend Merrill Reese now. Do you know currently right now that the Philadelphia Eagles are in the seven hole for the 2023 NFL draft? Because of the Saints pick. You talk about everything rolling in the right direction right now. You couldn't have got out to a better start organizationally and also team wise. It's incredible. Well, they've gotten off to a great start, Dan, and they're getting tremendous performances from uh, Jalen Hurts, from the receivers, from absolutely everybody. The only thing I say is that they played three games. That's it. And, and the last time I checked, the season goes until January 8th. So a lot of things can happen. So I stay away when people start to talk about, well, the Eagles may be the best team in the NFC, or the Eagles are a great, have a great chance this year to go the distance. I say, wait a minute. It's still September. So I don't really uh, project. I project week after week after week. One, I, I know this sounds like a coach. But I do it one game at a time and, and see what happens. Because we've spoken about this before, Dan. It's a war of attrition. You lose two or three people and everything can change. We all know this, Merrill, that three games are a trend when people are looking at how you evaluate something. What has been the biggest difference, in your opinion, on what you've seen in the first three games of this year compared to a year ago with Jalen Hurts? What's the noticeable thing you see that's different? Decision-making. He is very, very quick making decisions. He is very much in control. He is, his mechanics are better. He's very accurate. He's, a, he's played like a top-10 quarterback. I, now, before you say he's a top-10 quarterback, I think you have to see it over time. But right now, he is playing at an elite level. He's been absolutely outstanding. There was a play, Dan, uh, I don't know if you saw the, the end of the first half, where the clock was ticking. The Eagles were out of timeouts. Hurts calmly brought them to the line of scrimmage, called the play himself, didn't get anything from the sideline, and took the snap with one second left, waited until Devontae Smith faded into the corner of the end zone, put the ball in a position where only Devontae Smith could make the catch, and boom, another seven points. He, he, he is playing as good as he gets. Let me go through a couple of the guys. How impressed with you with how much character Devontae Smith showed from not getting any touches in week number one to what you've seen over the last two weeks with Devontae? Well, he's not an ego guy. I mean, if that were Terrell Owens, he would have been screaming and kicking and fighting on the sideline and everything else. He's not that kind of guy. He's a very low-key guy. He knows his chance will come. Uh, are, are you winning? That's what that's what Devontae Smith will ask. That's the same thing AJ Brown will ask. They care about they care about winning. That's the only thing they care about. Merrill, what do you think has been the most impressive thing on defense so far, and what you've seen in the first three games? Pressure. And that, not so much in the first game, but ever since then, there's been tremendous pressure exhibited by the defense. See, I'm a Jonathan Gannon guy. Uh, he took a lot of criticism from the fans of the talk shows uh, last year. But the fact of the matter is he didn't have the weapons that he needed. He has the weapons right now, and that's why I think he's done so well. 
Would you say, too, you've been impressed with the way Fletcher Cox has played these first three games? Sure. He's played well, uh, but he has a lot of help around him. He doesn't have to be out there every play. So you bring in, you spot in Jordan Davis. You have Hargrave, who you had last year. It's just been very, very effective. The talent is there. I mean, they have, um, you, you know, the corners have a lot to do with it, too. And you add somebody like James Bradbury, and you have big play slay, and that's, that's solid. And then you add the linebackers, Kaiser White. T.J. Edwards is playing out of his mind. There's a free agent from Wisconsin taken as an undrafted free agent four years ago, and he's terrific. Would, how, how, you know what? I said this at the beginning of the year, Merrill. I said that Josh Sweat has got to prove that he's an every-down defensive lineman, and boy, has he proved that. I mean, he was everywhere. Brandy Graham and him had monster games against Washington, and boy, just Josh Sweat is showing some of the promise that people thought he had. Have you been impressed as well? Well, I have, but, you know, he did make the Pro, pro Bowl last year. So yep. that says something right there. And the fact of the matter is when you talk about Brandon Graham, there's a guy who loves to play football. There's a guy who loves to be on the sidelines with his teammates. There's a guy who loves to be in the locker room. He has so much passion for his profession, and that's why he excels. Two and a half sacks last week. He has three already in three games. That's, this is a guy who's a 13-year, 34-year-old veteran, and he is still playing top-level football. Merrill, a couple last questions for you, and these are kind of emotion questions. I was one, and I was watching some of the sound bites and clips that WIP put up, and boy, you're just so contagious to listen to when you're talking about the football team. I was wondering what your emotions were when you were watching Carson Wentz playing against the Eagles. I mean, prior to the game, Fletcher Cox had said some great things about him. Even Jalen said some great things. Even Lane did, too. There's a lot of friendship in that locker room. And I was just wondering what your thoughts were in watching Carson Wentz play against the Eagles this past Sunday. Well, you know, when I was on the field before the game, and I was speaking with Carson Wentz also, and I like him. I think he's a good guy. I think he has a lot of talent. But um, Angelo Cataldi, who does the morning show on WIP, said he was playing my sack calls, and he said, it's obvious Merrill doesn't like Carson Wentz. Well, I do, <laughs> I do like Carson Wentz, but it was more the enthusiasm of this defense rising up and putting maximum pressure on the quarterback than Carson Wentz going down for the count five, six, seven, eight, nine times. So I wasn't, it wasn't that I was happy that Carson Wentz was suffering. I root for people, not against people. And I hope Carson Wentz has a good game this week. But when he's playing against the Eagles, I naturally want to see the Eagles do well and succeed, and he happened to be the victim. But I, I still think he has a lot of ability, although I will say that one of the faults that he had, one of the flaws he had after his injury from 2018 on until he left here was he held the ball too long, and I still think he's doing it. Final question for you. You know, you love Doug Peterson. He comes yep. into town. I said this earlier. He probably delivered and helped deliver the greatest moment in Philadelphia sports history since 1960. Yeah. And that's hoisting the Lombardi Trophy on Broad Street and bringing that title into that city that they so wanted for all those years. All the years you've been covering the team, getting so close, sniffing it, Vermeil with Andy, and then Doug wins it. I wonder what your emotions are going to be when you see Doug come through that 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 tun tunnel there and out of the locker room and onto Lincoln Financial this coming Sunday. What's your thoughts are going to be? Well, you know, I heard Doug say at his press conference when asked about the reaction, he said, well, you know, it's Philadelphia. It'll be mixed. It won't be mixed. It shouldn't be mixed. Doug Peterson should have a resounding standing ovation when he first comes out onto the field. A thank you for, as you said, giving Philadelphia its greatest sports moment. I can't wait to see it. The team is playing well. Thank you for always taking time for me, Merrill. Thank you very much, my friend. And we'll see what goes on this week, and it should be a very interesting game between the Jags and the Eagles. Thank you, Merrill. Thanks, Dan. Have a good day.